Lift your hands to the King of Glory. Father, we lift your name. Begin to lift his name with your own words. Father, you are worthy of all praise and adoration. Who is like unto you? Father, you have been good to us. You have been kind to us. You have been merciful. Father, we lift your name. Jesus, we glorify your name. Father, you alone is worthy. Thank you for who you are. Thank you for what you have accomplished in us. Thank you for what you're doing through us. Thank you that despite our weaknesses, our shortcomings, you have remained the same to us. May your name be lifted in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout fire. Fire. Somebody shout fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is about to do something amazing. Amen. See. I say God is about to do something amazing. I receive. I said God is about to do something amazing. I receive it. I said Jesus is about to touch you in Amen. a special way. The Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Amen. I said the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I can't hear you. Say neighbor. Neighbor. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Find another neighbor, say neighbor. Neighbor. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. You are about to experience his goodness. You are about to experience his goodness. <laughs> Hallelujah. I feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. I said I feel the presence of the Lord. I said I feel the presence of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am always excited to be amongst you. And I am always excited that we get this opportunity to be before God together. There is nothing that is more important in life than to be where God is. Eternal life is about being with God. So we get to rehearse while we are here. Amen. So if you don't prioritize God now, then God will not prioritize you in eternity. Amen. 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 You learn to love God now, then you will love him forever. You learn to be with him now, then he will be with you forever. Because God is also practicing that with you now. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So despite everything God is holding you, God is holding your hand. Are you going to do the same thing? Yes. To have mastery over your emotions, over your thoughts. That whether times are good, whether times are bad, whether things are difficult, Jesus, I am holding on to you. I know you will never leave me, but I will never leave you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Ah, God is amazing. Please grab your Bibles if you can. Grab your Bibles if you can. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2. Deuteronomy chapter 14 and verse 2. Deuteronomy 14 verse 2. Are you ready? Yes. yes. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, get one. <laughs> you need the word of God for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. Are you ready? Yes. One, two, three. For thou art holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. One more time. 
For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. One more time, one, two, three. For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. And the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. I don't think you believe it, so I need you to read it one more time so you can believe it. One, two, three. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. L lift your right hand to heaven. Say, Father. Father. I believe this word. I believe this word. I believe your word. I believe your word. Because your word is true. Because your word is true. And your word is life. And your word is life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You may be seated. Sit in heavenly places. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I, I pray for the cold anointing to end. Ah, it's too cold. <laughs> it's too cold. Daddy, these people, they want to kill us. <laughs> God is good. L listen to me by the spirit of the living God. There is a process that God has to put you through in order for you to display everything that God has called you to be. If you read the same verse again, he's saying that thou art a holy people unto the Lord, thy God, and the Lord had chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself above all nations upon the earth. Notice, there are certain things that stop you from being everything that God wants you to be. And those things, one of them is not God. One of them is not even your mistakes. One of them is you don't know what has been fulfilled on your behalf. You see, many, how many people want to live a holy life? Lift your hands. Let me see. How many people want to live a holy life? Wave your hands if you want to be holy. How many people feel like you're having a hard time being holy? Wave your hand. Be honest. Wave your hands. Be, be, be honest. Be honest. Uh, I, uh, Betty, I saw you lift your hand in your spirit and you put it down. <laughs> now, let me explain to you something that I believe will position you for what God is going to say to you and me today. The number one mistake is that you're trying to do what you have been declared. You see, holiness is a declaration of God. It has nothing to do with you. Okay, I think that went over your head. Stealing, not killing, all those things. Those are works of the flesh. But holiness, let me ask you a question for you to understand what we are trying to say. God is holy, right? Is he holy because he resisted sin? So holiness has nothing to do with sin. So you see, just the fact that you think you are struggling to be holy, you have already disconnected from what God has ordained for you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Listen to what the Bible is saying. You are a holy nation unto God, not because you are perfect. God is telling them, you are already holy to me. Yes. Your problem is your measurement is other people. Yes. You want to be like your neighbor. Let me talk to people who want to hear this. Amen, amen. Your issue is you want to be like other people. But God said you are holy unto me. Me, 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 me. Amen. So your life must be a measurement or must be measured according to the vision of God and what he has ordained for you. Holiness, 
Holiness has to do with the purpose you are ordained for. Holiness has nothing to do with I stole, I killed. No, no, no. has nothing to do with that. If you read in the book of Revelations or even in the Gospels, there's something funny that God says. He says, and the holy prophets. But we know they're all messed up. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Why are they holy? But you're thinking the holiness is purity. No, 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 no. Nobody can earn holiness because holiness is a nature that God can only bestow upon you. Just like righteousness, you cannot do it yourself. It is also bestowed upon you. The gift of righteousness. These are not things you work for. They are things that you have been given. So good. Are you sure you're here? You see, for you to manifest what God wants you to be, for you to be a peculiar people, to be a unique people, to be a different people, that difference won't be because you did something. It will be because he has done everything and you are a channel for that thing to be displayed. Amen. I prophesy to somebody today. Amen. You are about to be... A channel that the glory, the power, the manifestations of the virtue of God will be revealed. If you believe this, shout fire. Fire! Ah, you may be seated for two seconds. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want this to enter your spirit. So by it entering your spirit, it is easier for you to receive what God has for you. If... Your mind does not align. You see, the Bible says it like this. Let this mind also be in you that was in Christ Jesus. Amen. There was a mindset that was in Jesus. That is what separated him from everybody that was on earth. He totally and completely embraced what his father said about him. Are, are you understanding what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? So understand this before we go even deeper. Because today I want to speak about what it means to be chosen. And the issue is, I don't celebrate too much yet. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. The statement is not over. <laughs> even though that is enough to celebrate and to say yes, it is not enough. You see, there is something that you need to understand in the way that God works. And, and Daddy, I feel this is the problem with a, a lot of us. Is the understanding of the process is not there. Or the understanding of how God sees thing is, things is not there. We assume God is like a human being and God is not. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? We assume God thinks like us will make decisions like us, but God is not us. He said, your ways are not my ways. So it means that to walk with God, you have to adapt a different, uh, um, a different way in order for you to even have like a solid relationship. You know, when people said that, when people say, I have a good relationship with God, a powerful, many of them don't. They are just born again. There is no relationship. Because what is the evidence of a relationship? Is that whenever I need you based on our relationship, you'll come through. Yeah. This is uh, a reality. If you call Jesus right now, many of you will say, yeah, but the reality is he's not, he's not answering. He loves you. You're going to heaven. You have the benefits of salvation. But if you need him to come through for healing now, he may not come. Okay, let me ask you a question. Let's talk about faith for two seconds. Faith in a relationship, how does it come? Faith in a relationship manifests because of how close you've been together, how many things you've gone through. So you know your partner cannot let you down. Faith is not just a memorization of scripture that you claim to believe without knowing the person who will carry it out. Amen. 
So many of you have turned the Bible into a reporter book. X. Yes, Lord. Yes. <laughs> I see people in their prayer room sometimes when I see people like they are trying to pray. You see them. Father, you will do it. I'm like, hey. <laughs> do you understand who you are talking to? The fear and trembling you ought to have before God is not something you play with. But you see, all these things are because of the lack of the understanding of who you're working with. An example is when I am talking to God individually, I am on my knees. And I will talk with the greatest humility you ever find. But when I am declaring, changing, shift, shifting things, I, I will be a lion. Before God, lamb. Bah. <laughs> Before the enemy and the world, I am roaring. Why? Because before God, I can't be a lion. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying so far? So many of you are trying to carry out things by force. You are trying to force God's hand, yet your friend should just come through. Amen. Before the call, I will answer. It means he knows you so well. Daniel was just thinking about something God already answered. Gabriel came and said, man, you are so esteemed by God. From the day you just set your mind concerning this, he already sent an answer. So when we are talking about an intimate relationship with God, many of us don't really know what that is. We think it's lifting our hands, singing hallelujah. Nope. Listen, Valentine's, is it tomorrow? Right? Is it tomorrow? Okay, happy Valentine's <laughs> in advance. But many of you will be tricked. You get roses and you think it's a relationship. Uh, I think I'm only speaking to my brother in the back. Teaching. You get some chocolates and you're deceived. <laughs> Mr. Wachopo, is it not true? <laughs> you know when somebody, a bishop, just lifts his finger. <laughs> he answered by... <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, I feel like I just got hated in two seconds. <laughs> Hello. 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 Are you still here? Yes. <laughs> that is it not true. Some people just get teddy bears. And... <laughs> so capture this by the spirit of God. Hey, I'm not saying don't send things. I never said that. But I want you to understand a, 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 a beautiful process that God has for us. You are not holy because you have done anything. Because God wants you, he must make you holy. Because it is impossible to be with God unless you are holy. So it is something that he has to bestow on you. Like an example, the Bible says, and the holy angels, yet the angels have never sinned. They are not even tempted. Do you know why the, the Satan was kicked out of heaven? Who knows why Satan was kicked out of heaven? Why God, okay, let me say it like this. Why God will never forgive him? Who knows why Satan will never be forgiven? Yes, mama. Pride. But he forgives us of pride. But actually, that's not true. The, the Bible doesn't say that. Satan never wanted God's place. He said he, want, he wants to be like God, just like you. Are you not called to be like Jesus? He skipped classes. But what was the issue that God said you? He never said, I will be the most high. He said, I will be like. Jesus chose you to be like him. For those who received him gave he also the power to become. The problem is not to become because remember angels are also his children. They desire so much to be like him. 
That wasn't the error. Who thinks they know why Satan will never be forgiven? He wanted to be washed. He never said that. I'm just testing to see if the spirit of God will minister to you. Yes. You also have iniquity. Why are you forgiven? Say yes. He sinned in heaven. No, he, he no, he was the, they were in the heaven is the everlasting world, not eternal world, because it has a beginning. Uh, let me tell you why. I'm sorry I confused you because everybody's. Mm. <laughs> The reason why Satan will not be forgiven is because he had no tempter. He chose. He made a decision. There was no temptation for him. Nobody tricked him. Nobody seduced him. He chose. And based on his choices, God acted. You and me are forgiven because we were tempted. There were snares set for us. So if God is just, he cannot put all the blame on us. We have a part that we played. But that part that made us fall was not us. Somebody was out to get us. So God being just, he fixed our part. But also Satan is getting his part for what he has done. But for him, he was in heaven. He had his position that he could have grown and matured in. But he chose differently. That was the issue. Him elevating is not a bad thing because even angels get upgraded. That is why the Bible says in Psalms, bless the Lord all his angels who excel in strength. It means it is increased. Do you know that you can pray for the angels you are with? Father, cause them to exceed with strength. Now these are real secretives. Okay, let me clip. <laughs> the issue is that some people say, Father, I cover my angels in the blood. <laughs> That's not what we are saying. Because they rank in strength based on who they are. And their position. But they can also be increased. So it's not always about getting new angels. It's not always about that. The angel that you're with can be empowered more. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So understand this. In order to walk with God. God must make you holy. So it is something that you have been made. That is why he's saying you are holy to me. Not holiness according to your standard or what you think. You are holy to me. Number two. When God calls people unto himself, he declares them holy. But the issue is many of you have been called, but you have failed in the part that should make you chosen. These are now the stages that based on your understanding of working with God, determines your promotion in the kingdom of God. When God calls us all, his intention is the same for everybody. You are a chosen nation. You are special people unto me. You are a peculiar, uh, mm, uh, spicy meatball to me. You are a flavor on the earth. It means that there is something that he has seen to on all people. But when you look at the people of God, not everybody is a peculiar person. We just have regular Christians. Yet there is nothing regular about you, even in your spiritual DNA. Amen. Amen. 
1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9. 1 Peter 2.9. Now I'm going to reveal these things to you slowly and not take too much time because I know you guys are football today. <laughs> Some people are looking at me. Mm, I'm holy. <laughs> Foot what? <laughs> Listen to this. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into a marvelous light. So you are supposed to be a walking billboard that advertises the glorious praises of God. They cannot be praised without an act of God. So God wants to bring you to a place whereby miracles are like breathing. Divine intervention is like... Amen. That when people look at you, they just see God. They say, this one is walking with God. If you see how you see God. If you see him, you see God's intervention. But there is a process. Look at your neighbor and say, there is a process. There is a process. When God calls you, you are declared holy. Immediately. Are you listening to me? Immediately. Why? Because two cannot work together unless they what? Agree. So right now, you sin, but God is still with you. Why? Because he has declared you holy. Are you listening to me? There is something that God is going with based on his declaration over you and over me. Now when God calls you, he sees if you understand what the assignment is. Many of us don't change from the called to the chosen because we don't understand the vision and the assignment for, of God for your soul and for your life. Because the moment you are with God, things are good. You can never be lost again. But to be chosen is to be separated for an assignment. Amen. So good. To be chosen is to be prepared for an assignment. You see, many of you want greatness, but you are still among the called. That is why the Bible says something very powerful about Jesus. He said, the Lord has risen a prophet amongst us. You have to understand the language there. That God has raised up. It means he was just like everybody else. Then he was chosen and raised up. Even in the book of Deuteronomy when, he, when uh, uh, Moses was prophesying about the Lord Jesus. He said, and the Lord shall raise up another prophet like unto me. He did not say the Lord shall send. Because Jesus had to be like everybody else. But his eternal calling was his calling card. God said, you, you're going. I am reincarnating into the world. But this is my purpose. So from the time Jesus is a small boy, he was asking questions. It means he was not all-knowing. The Bible says he was at the temple asking questions that the priests were shocked. They were like, what in the name of God is this? This kid is asking disturbing questions, difficult questions. He was spending time at the temple that the parents were looking for him. They couldn't find him. They found him sitting with rabbis. So when Jesus grew up, and he, mold, he was completely molded into his assignment. When people called him rabbi, it is not that he wasn't mentored by rabbis. He already knew he was going to sit amongst these people. 
So even the rabbis who did not like him, they also called him what? Rabbi. They knew this boy, uh, this one that used to sit with us, they didn't know that they were training him. Your situation is training you. Amen. You are working for millionaires because you are going to be a multimillionaire. Amen. I see. I feel like I'm talking to myself. You are renting so that you can own and have properties that you can rent. You are working faithfully so that one day you can be established and many will work for you. Amen. See. I sit for two seconds. This is why the Bible says something very interesting. He says, do everything as unto the Lord. If you understood that your whole life, you see the Bible says that God tries the hearts of men. He's always testing you, measuring you. With every decision you're making, God is observing you. God is observing, checking you out. Hmm. Mm, almost ready, not yet. Ah, oh, why didn't you just hold on for a second? Now we have to wait a little longer for you to persevere, learn perseverance. You're almost there. Mm, close enough, close enough, close. Mm -mm. Wow, okay, okay. Angels are like, do it, do it, do it. Before you know it, you cross the line, heaven celebrates. Yeah. Because you have... Yeah. Yeah. Teaching good. <laughs> sit, sit down for two seconds, I beg you. <laughs> so, so capture this by the Spirit of God. Capture this by the Spirit of God. You see, the only way we harvest souls is not by preaching. Is you have to have something that proves you're preaching. If you don't have anything that declares what you're teaching, you're wasting time. That is why Jesus never commissioned anybody without signs, wonders, without the manifestation of the Spirit. It never happened. Listen, I'm going to say it and if you don't like it, Take it up with God. Anyone preaching the gospel without the manifestation of the spirit is an illegal representative of Christ. Heaven doesn't know you. I'll say it one more time for those who are sitting in the back. If you're a man or a woman of God that serves God without the manifestation of the spirit... When I'm talking about the manifestation of the Spirit, I'm not just talking about healing, deliverance, miracles. I am talking about the conviction that the Holy Spirit can take somebody's heart, change them, mold them to become a people of fire for God. Amen. That they will turn their backs on the world and turn their faces to God and say, Lord, whatever you want me to do, wherever you will send me, I will go, yes. for I have seen your face. Amen. Amen. You are an illegal representative of Christ if you cannot do that. You know, it is deep when daddy says you are preaching. <laughs> Since it for two seconds, let me use, let me use, let me use Daddy Donko's uh, line. A very powerful line he told me. Sometimes he doesn't even remember that we've had deep conversations. He told me this one day. He said, son, I want you to know something. The lifeline of the church is in evangelism. Your ability to win people sustains the bloodline sustains the lifeline of the church so a lot of times people just go out and say have you received jesus it is not bad it is okay but after you say that are they changed do you realize nobody met jesus and remained the same you cannot see him and remain the same there is a lot of people that say, oh, I saw an angel, I saw this. 
you look at them is and... say, okay. <laughs> to see, to see. <laughs> Maybe in your dreams it's easy, you know. It can just be you ate beans so your dreams are shifting into each other. Uh, you know, a little fufu will make you <laughs> dream differently. To see a heavenly being face to face. There are times I have angelic encounters for days I can't eat. Not because I'm fasting. I'm traumatized. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Your appetite just vanishes. Sometimes you have an angelic encounter. Immediately, you can even lose weight. Because your body changes. It's like you've been fasting and you haven't. You just shrink and it doesn't make sense. I know a man of God that had an encounter. He was a young man at this time. He was in his uh, uh, mid-twenties. And he had a face-to-face -face encounter with an angel. After he came out of the experience, his hair became white. To this day, his hair grows white. Ah, these things change you forever. I pray for an encounter for you. I receive. I receive. I pray for a profound encounter for you. I receive. I sit for two seconds, two seconds. So understand this by the Spirit of God. I, I feel like time is moving quite fast, but understand this by the Spirit of God. God is always examining your heart on how you treat things especially matters of his kingdom. Many of you will make heaven and you will hate yourself, slap yourself and say, how did I miss these opportunities for great crowns when they were just before me? The harvest is plentiful, but it is not going to be harvested by people who are speaking without a spiritual ability to bring people to Christ doesn't happen. You are sitting here today, full house, thousands online here, is because you know there is something beyond a handsome young black man. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I receive. Can I be real? I'm being honest. There is something more. You know, there is something that if somebody was just to see a picture, say, I, you know, okay. I don't know. Are you sure he's a man of God? But you've experienced something beyond the flesh. So let me explain to you because I am trying to show you the way to be pushed up. When you are chosen, God has given you opportunities to see now if you understand that you have been called to show forth his praises. Notice, not to praise, but to show forth. To be a revelation unto the world of what God can do. When you understand this, God says now, I have chosen you. And when you are chosen by God, God has to turn your world upside down because you cannot be a testimony without a test. Amen, amen. You cannot show forth praises without having gone through the fire. I feel like I'm talking to a few people. You cannot be one that can declare the glories of God. That when people look at you, they say, no, 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 no. God is with her. God is with him. Look at where they came from. Look at what has happened with them. Amen. And they are still here. Yeah. They are thriving there. Yes.
Uh, sit down for two seconds. I'm about to finish, I promise. When you become chosen, you have entered boot camp. Listen to me and listen to me carefully. David's life was easier when he was a shepherd boy than when he was chosen. The moment he was chosen, he had more problems to deal with. When he was dealing with sheep and goats, life was easier. Notice God delivered him from bears and lions. Nobody talks about it. Do you know that David, at a certain time, he said, I took my lamb out of the mouth of the lion. Do you know what that means? He went up to a lion and grabbed his mouth, tore his mouth like Samson did. That is why he was not afraid of Goliath. He said, I took my, my, my lamb out of his mouth. Do you know what it means? A lion has a, an animal in his mouth. David is not a soldier. He doesn't have a sword. Are you going to kill a lion with a slingshot? Some of you just need to go to the LA Zoo. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Then you will understand what a lion is. In fact, the lion that, that uh, 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 um, Samson killed was actually a young lion. He was not even a fully grown lion. He was young. He was by himself. It means he had been exiled from his pack. David killed a whole lion, a whole bear. How did he kill a bear? Did he stand with a club? Ah. There was a supernatural thing that happened to him that he could do these things, but all these things were tests where nobody could see. And the only time you hear David talking about it was when he faced Goliath. After that, he never mentions it. When you are chosen... What proves that you are ready to be immersed into the training is your remembrance of the small testimonies where nobody saw you. Amen, amen. So good. That says I am ready for the challenge. You see, Goliath was not David's problem. Are you listening to me? Goliath was Saul's problem. Not David's problem. David was going to visit his brothers. But uh, after he was chosen, the burden of the nation went on him. You see, many of you care so much for yourself. That's why you cannot be upgraded. It's good. You are only worried about your bills, your children, your house. You are not thinking about God. When I look at Revelation Church, I feel like we should have a TV station. I feel we should have, there are so many souls to be won. You see, your vision is still just you. But chosen people are those who are called to show forth it means they are a billboard. They are a channel that God brings people to his kingdom. Amen. 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 It doesn't mean if you are called, you can't be blessed. You'll be blessed. Amen. But will it be a blessing that will change the world? Never. I feel like I'm talking to myself. Are, are you sure you're here? Yes. I, I'll sit for two seconds. We're going somewhere. The moment, if it, this is a sign, let me just give you a sign to know that you are chosen. Are you ready? Yes. Let me give you one, even though I was hoping to give this at the end, maybe I will not be able to. Let me give you just one now. A sign to know that you are chosen is that you start to carry burdens that are not yours. And you carry them not by feeling you are compelled to pray for situations without recognition, without advertising. You just feel like, ah, I saw sister so-and-so, 
and you just felt a burden in your spirit, I need to fast and pray for them. Yeah. That you are fasting and praying for them, they don't even know. They even hate you maybe. Yeah. But you know you have a spiritual responsibility over them. Yeah. That you are fathering them, sunning them in the spirit without even them knowing. Yeah. When they get a breakthrough, they will think it is them, but you know you did it. And by doing that, then God now builds you up and puts you in the public eye to declare over, I feel like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> to be chosen. Ah. To be chosen. God, you see, th this is why you are, do you know what it means to be chosen? Let me take Uncle Fahed. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Fred for a second. To be chosen means that, okay, stand right here. Uncle Fred, you're a handsome man. Thank you. It's your grace. Try to catch up with <laughs> the Armenian drip is deep. <laughs> ah, you look. <laughs> Uncle Fred. <laughs> and you're looking in shape too. You're losing weight, you know. <laughs> Uncle Fred, <laughs> Uncle Fred is deep. <laughs> you see, okay, le let me do this. Let me, let me gather a few people. Let me gather a few people. Come, come, come. Yes, you, you, you. Versace, Versace. <laughs> come, 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 join us, join us. Come, go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Can we borrow you? Go, go, go. Oju, go. Even you. Come, soldier man. <laughs> so this is what God does. This is just a visual representation. I'm just trying to show you how God thinks. What, why is it that when you get chosen, it becomes difficult? And it's only difficult for a season. Not for a long time. Mamati, can I borrow this? Yeah, just this. No, no, just this. This whole thing. You know, women's purses usually weigh 50 pounds. You think there's a whole body in there. You may just get, uh, you know, biceps just. Ah, it's deep. So when God calls all these beautiful people, in God's mind, he's looking for a candidate who can handle his own pressures. God has desires. God has things that he wants. God has things that he wants to vent. There are things that he wants to accomplish. But his main man, Adam, failed him. So it disrupted things. So God is looking for a way to carry out his purpose in the way that he already had ordained it to be. Meaning that without man, the assignment of God cannot happen on earth. This is why angels don't preach the gospel. There will be better preachers than us. But they are not permitted. Because on the earth, no spirit can function without the permission of a human being. Even God needs you. He can override us. He can do all that. But according to his own law, I have given man the lease of earth 6,000 years. I'm not going to interfere. I will only intervene if they call me. When he wanted to save the world, he had to make himself a human being. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? So God will come. And say, wow, I see the capacity I gave all of them. I've given them such a powerful capacity. Let me now measure if they are aware of the capacity. So God measures your ability to hear him first.
Because Jesus said, you have not chose me, chosen me, I chose you. You did not call me, but I called you. So God begins to measure by raising a prophet. This is just an example. Raising a prophet. And this young man actually, the prophetic is inside of him. But watch this. He raises him and gives him a burden. Hold it heavy. <laughs> Who else has a heavy purse? I need one more. Don't worry, we don't steal. No, leave the Bible in there. Leave, leave it in there. It's all prophetic. Is that yours, Auntie Lori? Okay, let me borrow this. But God has given here. Bang. I need another purse. Two more. Hey, Jesus. Ha! Huh. <laughs> there is a car folded in there. there. <laughs> you weren't kidding this person. Okay, bicep curl. Go. One. Two. Three. You are. <laughs> add this one. One more. Now, stand, stand here. Mo, you are Moses now. Stand here. So one day, no, no, no. You, you are standing on the side. Moses, one day he looked at God. He said, God, I'm tired. He said, How ca I don't want to be a prophet anymore. God said, what's going on? He said, no, no, no. This burden is too hard to carry. It's too heavy for me. Just take me. I want to go home. No, Moses literally prayed that. He said, Lord, I want to go. I'm tired. And God said, wait, 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 wait. Calm down, calm down, calm down, calm down. Pick 70 elders. I won't pick them because they will fail. But you pick those who you think. 70. I will take what is in you and I will give them so that you can sh they can share in carrying the burden. You see, many of you, you just come to Revelation Church for me to carry your burden. But very few of you say, let me help in carrying the burden. <laughs> this is why some of us, we don't have insomnia, but we don't sleep much. Because we are carrying you. It is our assignment we don't complain. I don't sleep a lot, honestly. I don't have insomnia, nothing. I am just always consistently either praying, thinking, okay, what can I do for the kingdom? God is here talking to me, do this. It's difficult. But we have been built up for it, so there's no complaint. This is, I wouldn't do, I'd rather do this than anything else. i rather walk with God, hear the voice of God than anything else. So, he's carrying this. The, the, try one more bicep curl. Let's see how strong you are. There, okay, try this other hand. Okay, there we go. Okay, good, good, good. You are still in the game. Okay, at least you can still carry it. So now God says, let me see. These people are supposed to be helping with this thing. But let me see if they can hear. I'll say, walk, just take one step forward, one step forward. Now, when there was a whole crowd, when God called, these are the only ones that stepped. It meant they, they, meant they heard the voice of Jesus. When there is a lot of people, this is why you find in a family, you're the only one that is saved. Not many of you in your family believe God like you do. You are committed to going to the house of God. You just want to follow Jesus. You want to do these things. It is because when he called, you heard him. You are here because you heard him. Amen. So that step meant that, okay, we have heard. So God is like, they heard me. He says, okay, let me put... Moses in front of them. Let me see if they will see him. 
and listen. So he passes in front of them because they heard of the call of God because of him. So I am not God, but I'm pretending to be God. He is me for now. So he's preaching and they are coming, they are listening, they are listening. God is like, wow, these people are willing. Okay. Let me now ask them, are they willing to let go of their own lives and take on what I have for them? This is the part that now you decide if you want to be chosen. You can feel that, eh? It's okay. It's okay. He's starting to vibrate. It's okay. <laughs> Deep breath. Relax. It's an atmosphere. <laughs> There's something happening to you. Just... Now, watch this. He announces, God wants to use you to do great things. But many of you don't entail that for God to use you, it means that you can't be doing what you used to do. So, Uncle Fahed says, me, he says, yay. Versace, Versace says, yay. <laughs> Everybody says, yes, I will do it. So you take one more step forward. Take one more step forward. Now, they have all said, Lord, we will. The way I love you. But notice, there hasn't been any test involved. Yeah. <laughs> it's deep. <laughs> oh, you're going to learn today. <laughs> you're going to learn today. <laughs> You're going to learn today. You're going to carry them bags, boy. <laughs> but this is actually prophetic because this happens because it's taking too long and he can't do as much because he's carrying too much. Trust me. Then God says, okay, they have said that. Let me see if they can handle. They said they're going to follow my servant. Okay, let me give them some burdens. Give him. Thank you. Doctor. Just one, just one, just one. No rush. Huh? <laughs> so, uh huh. That's deep. Look at Rev. <laughs> Luca is a genius. <laughs> he said the shoulder can handle it. I'm going to use my shoulder. But now look at this. Let me, Auntie Betty come. Be, Betty, Betty come. He's so enthusiastic. He said, me, I will come. But the moment he picked this up, he let go of his wife. Because now the balancing act has changed. And she was excited until she did not understand that it will also affect her unless she's willing to hold one side of the bag and carry. Thank you, girl. I feel like I'm prophesying. Sit for two seconds for the people who are in the back. I hope you can really see this. Because God called him. She chose him. If we are going to remain together, I better be involved with what God wants. Amen. Because God is number one, God won't care if he leaves you behind. Can I be really honest? Yes. Because God is your number one lover. So you have to be okay being second to yeah. God, but making sure you are also involved. Because the moment you fail in this, it's not even Satan that will do it. God himself will do it. 
you know, me, I tell you the truth. I don't, I don't camouflage. Not every relationship that has been destroyed is because of Satan. That is a lie. Many a times, especially when it comes to men and women of God, it is the failure to understand that the calling, you see, when God calls, he doesn't call two people, he calls one person. Daddy, if I'm preaching wrong, you can correct me. You are a father here. You correct me. Apostle, you can correct me. But I'm just saying the truth. God does not call two leaders. He calls one leader. One person must be the carrier of the vision. So when God picks somebody, it is the wisdom of the other person to understand that this is where I need to plant myself because the will and the purpose of God is happening and I am going to get involved. And it will be easier for me because I am not dealing with God directly because that means more conditions. So it is easier for me to serve a man than to serve him directly because if I'm serving under a man, there is mercy. Directly with him, it's uh, more wahala. No, I'm serious. Everybody wants to see Jesus, but you don't know the conditions that follows walking with Jesus. It's easier to be sent just to be anointed and sent and you're doing things and they're working not because you had a sit down with him. Some of us, there are foods we can't even enjoy anymore. There are things we can't do anymore. Not because they are sin, they are part of the condition. Imagine Samson. His bone is told, you will never cut your hair. Uh uh. You see people with a nice fade. <laughs> but you, you've had hair since you were born, not because it's nicely brushed. Don't touch that hair. Sometimes it's hot. Imagine from the time that you are born, and remember this is a person from the east. How did he look? John the Baptist, he's just in the wilderness. You think he didn't want to live in the city? Do you think Elijah just wanted to move every week? I'm here today, tomorrow, there. Do you think he didn't want partnership, companionship? You think Paul... Do you know why Paul said I won't get married? He knew what Jesus said to him. Yeah. When the Lord went to Ananias, the, pro the, 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 the prophet, and he told him, he told him, go open his eyes. This guy will suffer a lot of things. He did not say he would do things. He said he will suffer for me. Paul's calling was part suffering. So Paul understood the kind of suffering he will have. Having a family will not work. So he said, guys, marry for me. But you see now people made a whole doctrine. They became priests on the mountain. For an interaction they never had with God. They should have been chopping, enjoying life. Enjoying some nice warmth at night when it's cold. But they've chosen something that is not even necessary for what they're doing. Self-imposed inflictions. Why? Because human beings, we like to do religious things. We don't like to do spiritual things. Religion is easy because you can manage it. Spirituality is difficult because you don't write the rules. It is God who decides it as he wants it to be. Amen. And it's usually... Not on your terms, so it is difficult to manage. Whatever you manage, I do this. When it's not up to you, it's different. So now, Uncle Fred was given one. She did not help with the bag. So she remained behind. And Uncle Fred remained forward. So now Uncle Fred is suffering, not because God can intervene for that. You see, 
This is not a God thing. This is a you thing. God doesn't get involved in relationships the way people think. I wish people would really understand this. God will give you counsel. But there are things that are your decisions. Can God mend relationships and stuff? Yes, he can. If it was a certain way, God can. But there are some things, some things are completely decision. Completely. So Uncle Fred's burden was given to him on account of his partner. That she can be a helper. But she did not help out. Because they have become one flesh and the ministry of God is not just spiritual. It is also what? Physical. So whatever God gives him is keeping account of her. Just like when God was giving Adam his assignment, he said it is not good for him to be alone. He made Eve. The whole time Adam is moving around, Eve is existing. But Adam doesn't know the need of Eve until he is awakened to that fact Eve is brought out. So he already found Eve, so God is expecting Eve to play along. So now because of this, the burden is also so heavy for Uncle Fred that is no longer effective for God. That he also takes a slight step back. Not completely back, a slight step. So what he was supposed to be able to carry out, he wouldn't be able to effectively. He is limited because the extension of him is not working. Teaching good. So now God, what he has given, has been stifled, is not working. So God is in distress. Because now what has happened is that the burden has been taken from him wow. again. Oh, no. It has gone. <laughs> he said, oh no. <laughs> Let's use the genius of the shoulder. Put that down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Sorry, today is a workout. <laughs> and then you... <laughs> it's okay. Just keep it close to you. So now... God has had to return the burden to him. Because the first candidate could not do it. He wants God, but now he's trying to fight for this. Too good. Okay, I'm done. Let me... Teaching good. Too good. Good. Teaching good. I'm just trying to help. My daughters and sons, those who want to marry, those who are serving God. It is not about the Gucci's. They're looking nice. It is much deeper. Yeah. If you're not willing to serve, not baby, but man of God. Because those two have to be separate. The reason why she did not help is because she was like, baby, how you, you are choosing this. She doesn't understand that man of God and baby are two different people. Teaching good, Pop. Teaching too good. Setting us free. Prophetess and the woman, two different people. It's okay. It's part prophetic. My own son and nephew, they are all my sons. They even know. Sometimes it's Uncle Lovi, sometimes it's Prophet. So she wants man of God to be baby, but man of God can't be baby. There is a time for baby, but it will be more man of God than baby. But he will develop wisdom to know how to balance it. But she also needs to understand outright that God is number one to him. 
Without that understanding, she'll be frustrated, stressed out, depression, oppression. Satan will also come in and say, yeah, I got you, destroy you. And then she will begin to resent him, yet it was not him, it was her. She failed to know who she was with. My God, my God. You know what? I'm going to do a part two for this. Amen, amen. Because of time. Listen, I have seen men of God go through this. I have seen women of God go through this. No, this is a reality in the kingdom of God. I'm being honest with you. Does God love marriage? He does. Does he love it more than his purpose? Nope. God was willing for Xerxes to be divorced so that Esther can come in, so that his nation can be saved. Are you listening to me? God chose divorce so that his nation can be saved. Am I saying divorce is good? No. Do you think if the woman was a good woman, God would have needed Esther? No. She would have said, no, we can't kill these people. Why are we going to cause a massacre to happen in this nation? It would have been a different counsel. Like if you remember um, uh, Pontius Pilate's wife. She had an encounter with God. She went to her husband and said, listen, don't have anything to do with that guy. I saw in a vision is innocent. And this is a Roman woman. She has nothing to do with Christianity, but God spoke to her. She said, don't have anything to do with that man. Leave him alone. That is why Pilate kept saying, you know, I can free you. You know, then Jesus told him, notice that the sin is not with you, it's with them. That is why at the end he washed his hands because of what his wife had told him. He said, whatever you guys are doing to this person, I have nothing to do with it. Many of the attacks, especially for those who are serving God, is the lack of understanding of whom you're trying to be with. Let's say you want to marry a businessman who is always traveling. You found him traveling. You marry him now, you don't want him to travel. Do you think that relationship will work? If you want to marry him, get ready to travel also. Amen. You saw an actress, amazing actress. She has more people on camera. It's part of the job. She's not in love with them. It is a movie. It's called Acting. Amen. <laughs> uh, that one came from a passionate place. <laughs> now you want to marry them. They come from work. You say, oh, so did you really kiss them like that? How much time did you spend? How are we going to win Oscars and bring our family up? Instead of cheering for me, say, baby, no, no, no. You should have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only acting. Teach you good. Teach you too now, good. I'm being honest. Being real honest. I, I didn't feel like it was real, you know. <laughs> Honey, you got to make it more real. It's acting. I'm not offended. I know what we are in. All right, I'm done. Like teach you. Teach you good. I'm just being honest. Can I be honest? Daddy, is it not true? It is what it is. You found them acting. God gave them a gift. That's what they do. What are you going to do? You're going to support them. Imagine you were able to marry them. There, they're just acting, but you're stressed. How are you going to handle How does that make any kind of sense? It won't even make dollars. You'll be broke. Let, let me, please, can I have 
10 more minutes, I promise I'm done. Yes. Let me move quickly now. Let me move quickly. So what I'm telling you is real life things because some of these things, you guys have made them spiritual and they're not. A lot of our issues are because of our own heart. The Bible says, guard your heart above all things because out of it comes the issues of life. It's not saying that Satan only takes advantage of what you're obsessed with. If you are dead to material things, Satan knows that if he attacks them, it doesn't affect you. He won't. He knows if he does that, he draws you closer to God. He will leave you alone. Your attachments are what are causing attacks in your life. The rich young ruler did not follow Jesus, not because there was a demon that was inside of him. He loved his material things more than Jesus. He didn't need deliverance. Come out. Ah, nothing. So now Uncle Fahed is here. Trying to fight for this. But in the process of also doing that, souls are dying. So God has to move on. Can I make one statement? Maybe I, I promise you I'll have to do a part two. Because of time. Because I know you have su Super Bowl. I don't want to keep you. Let me tell you something. This is something that I, I need all of you to understand. And I'm sorry. And, and even me, it sucks that it is this way. But that's how it is. God is sensitive. God is not emotional. God has emotions. But he's not emotional. God doesn't do or say or make decisions because of how he feels about you. The Bible says that he saw it fit to afflict Jesus. Not discipline him. Afflict him to hurt him. It pleased him. Against his own emotions. It was the right thing to do. He was okay with killing his son. To save you. That wasn't an emotional decision. It was a calculated decision. God does not decide anything because of who or how you feel. What? If it was about feelings, there would not be world hunger. There would be no sick amongst us. God has provided a way. But that way has nothing to do with emotions. Mm -hmm. Has to do with spiritual decisions, which we call faith. Yes. Jesus is born. He is supposed to bring life to all mankind. And that's what he did. And that's why me and you are here. But at his birth, millions of children were slaughtered because of him. Why didn't Jesus just... Because he is God. Why didn't he just make other children not die? That they will not be able to pursue them. Why didn't the angel of the Lord announce it to all parents who had newborn babies to escape? He was okay with children dying so that his own son can be saved. Because those children dying, even though the parents will be crying for them, their spirits are in heaven. They haven't lost anything. But notice those parents don't know that. They will go through emotional problems. For the short time is good. For the long term, great benefits. God was okay with Ishmael growing fatherless. You think God is about emotions like you and me. Abraham has two, his firstborn, Ishmael loves his firstborn. Loves his firstborn, firstborn. God comes and tells him, I know you love him, but I have not chosen him. Ah. Do you know how painful that is? To hear God tell you, what you love, I don't love. But Abraham, this is his son of his old age. He doesn't even know if you have another child. God said it, he believes God. But it hasn't happened. All of a sudden... His wife gets into it with Haggai. 
she sends them away. Abraham wants to bring his son back. God said, hey, let them go. God, God said, come down. I will bless him also. Because he knew Abraham's desire was that he will not have children that are not blessed. If you're not even going to allow me to be in his life the way you want, at least let your blessing also go with him. Then what did God say? Hey, I will bless him also. He's not the promise, but I will bless him also. He will also be great, but he's not the chosen. So Ishmael growing up saying, that doesn't even love me. He was okay for my mom to take me away. But God didn't intervene. It was okay with God. Do you see that you don't think the way God thinks? I'm, I'm, can I just be, I'm just being honest and real with you. The reason why we have such a hard time walking with God is we don't understand who we are walking with. Does, did God feel what Abraham was feeling? Yes. But did what God do, was God's decision necessary? Absolutely. You think Ishmael cares right now? He's in glory enjoying his, himself. Hey, little bro, good job. I didn't have to go through that, thank God. <laughs> you see, we are so short term, but God is eternal. So all his thoughts are also eternal. So God was okay with Ishmael growing up like that. Okay. Job loves God, faithful to God. God is enticing Satan to mess him up so God can bless him. Right? But in the process of that, his children die, his wife leaves him. Even if you have other children, will you be the same? You didn't bury one child. You buried all of them at the same time. Was God sensitive? Yes. Was it necessary? Absolutely. For our benefit. I sit down sometimes and I remember, uh, and I promise I'm finishing. My brother Christian, do you know how many cancers I've healed? Do you know how many demons I've cast out? Do you know how many people are on their deathbed that I, I, I brought back? But the person that I love the most, I wanted to bring back. He sustained him for a time and told me I'm taking him. I'm taking him. Painful, but necessary. For you to be close to God, you can't have attachments. I am just being as real with you as I can. Amen. And I'm saying this with all love. Because at the end of the day, his thoughts will always be for our good. We may not understand it now. Next year, 10 years from now, 20 years. But one day, we will have a, uh-huh. Wow. Thank you, Lord, that you did it. Who, who would have known what would have been if it went the other way? Some of you, you've had painful marriages, divorces, separations. They are terrible. You've loved God, you've been faithful to God. If God did not bring it back, it hurts. But embrace what God is doing. Amen, amen, amen. Don't fight against God. I wish I would say it one more time for somebody to hear me. Don't force anything. Allow God to be God. I promise you, Next week, we'll finish this. Please sit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We just stopped at Uncle Fahed, but okay. The owners of the purses, please come and collect your purses before I go shopping. Please stand up. Stand up. I don't want to keep you long. I've gone way over the mark.
Thank you, Jesus. I had a countdown until the countdown ended. And JT is here. You see, when you see him, he's just trying to rush people. <laughs> Papa, you know there's a football game, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now there's nothing wrong with we get our dose of, of the bread of life and then we go and enjoy life. Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly normal. And God is okay with it. But I want you to understand something. You are feeling the weight of being chosen. You're feeling the burden of it. It's difficult. It's not easy. But this is the breaking point or the turning point that if you are able to persevere and mature according to God's mind, the moment you cross that line, you enter into what is called the anointing. The reason why the anointing doesn't work when you are chosen is because it has not come upon you. And God is trying to maximize your physical capacity. Because the more he can expand your physical capacity, the greater the amount of oil you can contain. So God will stretch you to the point that you cannot be stretched anymore. So when he pours the anointing inside of you, you will have such a big portion that you can spread it around and it will never run out. Amen. Many of you, your anointing is just enough to give thanks and bless food. It can't do anything more than that. That is the reason that there must be a shift. You are about to have the greatest testimonies of your life. I said the greatest testimonies are about to manifest. I receive. I said the greatest open doors are about to manifest. I receive. Greater elevation is being released. I receive. Elevation of a greater dimension is being given to you. I receive. I want you to pray and say, Lord, give me strength and courage. Give me strength and courage. Lord, give me strength and courage. Lord, give me strength and courage. Father, give me strength and courage. Father, give me strength and courage. That I will be able to stand. That I will be able to stand. And carry out everything that you have ordained for me. And carry out everything that you have ordained for me. Lift up your voice and pray. Zikunda ba zele mando kureba de vazite ishba dosba ante zikunda magin de levi koroba vazete indule mambo le manda vazanda ustima akisto karinde lebiska aruba taska ande lenoro bosambe zikra doska antu maari manike di karuba ata. Akride indele disco oribi disaba bimele osoro manda bazete lebra do kure ba kista la ku ne kore benda veste le mando repanda basi zi mando rumanda bagi dele vida vendele ma aroba shetia le kore manda bazete rumanda bagi Le <laughs> Bring it, 
attachments prevent us from entering into the promise of God. Learn to let go of people, of situations. When you let go, your hands are open to receive. Amen, amen, amen. You think you have the best, but God has ordained the best for you. Amen. If he has taken something away, I want you to pray and say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Lift up your voice. Say, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Today I let go. 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 Of hurts. Of hurts. Of the past. Of the past. Relationships. Relationships. That you took away. That you took away. Material things. Material things. That you took away. That you took away. I am okay with it, Lord. I am okay with it. You know better. You know best. You know best. You know best. Pray and ask God to help you. Apostle, please pray for them. Daddy, I feel in my spirit that God has given you a word to say to the church, please. Oh my God. Koshata, ilabosa, ilaba, iba, iba. Lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost. Kata, ile, ibaosha, imra. Spirit of God, have your way, have your way, have your way. Madagayabosha. Rasso Kabataya. Brokatata. Imosa. Ilerebe Cobra Tayaba. Miriolebota Sata. Inamashaka. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. Fresh fire, fresh fire, fresh fire. For indeed many are called, but only a few are chosen. For through the furnace of affliction have I chosen you. For you may not understand everything that I put you through, but do not fight the chisel. Do not fight the fire, for the fire burneth. The chisel breaks and prunes and sets you apart for my calling, for my purpose, for my mission, for my agenda. And today I place my stamp of approval upon your life. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. For I set you apart for that calling. Yes, I chose you as a weak thing without any qualification for I take the weak things of this world to confound the mighty the foolish to confound the wise and the things that are despised to bring to nothing the things that are regarded so no flesh will glory in my sight for my stamp of approval is upon you this day I've taken you through the fire, the waters, 
the trials and the tribulations it was to prune you and set you apart into that calling into that purpose you are chosen you are chosen receive that stamp of approval and you know it within yourself that you were chosen it is not for everybody you know it within yourself you have the witness in your spirit that you are chosen and even as you embrace the choosing of the Lord may fresh fire fall upon your life may fresh fire fall upon your life May the heavens be open upon your life see. in every dimension, in every area. May you rise to become all that he's called you to be in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Somebody shout amen. 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 Come, come to me. Is this not weird? It's weird, huh? God knows you too much. Yes, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Hold my hand. Look at me. Come to me, come to me. Look at me. Clap for Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands and say, Father, I am ready to receive everything new that you have for me. Lift up your voice and pray. Father, this is one of the most important prayers. Lift up your voice and pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. In the powerful name of Jesus. I receive a new beginning today. I receive a new beginning today. Say, I receive a new beginning today. I receive a new beginning today. I receive a new activation today. I receive a new activation today. Of the Spirit. Of the Spirit. That will elevate me. That will elevate me. And push me. And push me. To my destined place. To my destined place. To my destined calling. To my destined calling. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Begin to pray. Pray like thunder. Pray like thunder. Pray like thunder. It's up to you. You just let me know. Not the church, me. Thank you, God.
You see, the difference between our church and other people is this. We do what God says. There are certain things we can, listen, I can cast out demons all day. We can heal the sick all day. We can bind demons all day. But there are certain things if God says, you do. Because if that is not the way God says God left, what are you going to do? This is why you need to come out of being chosen and enter into being appointed. Because when you are appointed, resources become an extension of you. You can carry out the will of God. Amen. One thing that I want you to remember. Our church, we are not poor people. Amen. 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 Let me tell you what poverty is. You can be a millionaire, a billionaire and be poor. What is the definition of poverty? When what you have is enough for you, you are poor. It doesn't matter what car you drive. It doesn't matter what house you live in. If what you have cannot take care of another person outside of you, you are poor. That is poverty. According to the standards of God, you are supposed to live on the overflow. We are supposed to have overflow. Not live on the overflow, but we should have so much that we are just dripping hundreds of thousands, millions on people, that people's life can change. Now, you didn't hear what I'm saying. If you hear me by the Spirit, you'll know. Me, I am not allergic to poverty. I don't even recognize it. You say poor, I'm like, huh? Where? Who? We are not fathers by title. By action. Amen. 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 Six months is the timeline. This will happen sooner. All I want is when everything is set up. I just want to come and have dinner. Oh. So we can praise God together. Amen. Whatever you want. Amen. Let me know. The issue is when I come and have dinner, you will be promoted now. There will be another one that will come. So... <laughs> If I visit your house, it's because another house is coming. Amen. See, see. <laughs> if I come visit you in your apartment, no, it's time to leave. Amen. All right, that's fine. I won't visit. <laughs> You see, some of you don't know what you carry. Me, I know. Uh -uh, I know. Some of you don't know me. I am very much aware. Yes. Amen. I am very much aware. Amen. If you don't know what you carry, what are you giving? Amen. Peter said, what I have, I give unto you. He didn't say, let me pray for you. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The walls have come down. Let me tell you the secret to why I'm very blessed. I am the biggest giver I know. Amen. No, I really am. 
There is no one who's been around me, around my house, around my family, and will say, uh, anyone who tells you anything else, they don't know me. They have never had a relationship with me. Amen. It's a lie. Amen. Amen. Big time. Big time. So, grace has been released. Run. Run. Get it done. Yes, sir. I want my dinner. That's what you owe me. Amen. It's done. Amen. Okay, let me show you how crazy this is. Mama T just gave you 5,000. <laughs> You know when you're cool and <laughs> clap for Jesus. Oh, hold on, hold on one second. Do we have another mic? Let's give Vanessa a mic. So. Vanessa is one of my spiritual daughters, and she's a UFC fighter. Let's go, you guys. Let's go. Uh, you see, Let's go, you guys. So, <laughs> if you try something, I'll just send her. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. You guys have no idea. No idea where I was one year ago. Let me tell you guys, right before I left California, I was in here every Thursday, every Sunday, on my knees, praying, crying, no dollars in my pocket, you guys. Like, literally, so, so just, God was all I had. God was absolutely all I had, and Papa Lovey, man. Papa Lovey. <laughs> yeah. Papa Lovey, man. If I had a few dollars in my pocket, I was trying to give, and let me tell you, like, he just prayed over me. He anointed me on this stage right here, you guys. And I took that, and I took God, and I was called somewhere else. I was called to Arizona, and I went there six months ago. I was not a UFC fighter, and I had just gotten my belt taken away from me. I had 20 stitches in my face, you guys. I did not look like this. God has just continued to bless my life and heal me. As soon as I moved, I got in the UFC, and three weeks ago... I fought, I fought, I got knocked out, you guys, and I kept fighting. I was knocked out, and God was in there with me, and I kept fighting. And at the end of the day, I was on the early prelims, and I got performance of the night bonus, and I won $50,000. I just want to say thank you so much, God. Thank you, no, Papa. No, you are not just knocked down. You won. <laughs> I won! I armored her! Knocked out! You know, one thing that I, you know, I, I love about Vanessa, one day she came to see me, and I prayed for her. And I did the same thing that I did for them. And I told her, God said that this is the beginning of a lot of things. And I don't know if you remember, I told you, get ready. They're going to give you a short notice call. Yes, you do. And they are going to call you. And yes, that's how you're going to enter into the UFC. Yes, sir. Not even six months. She's already one of the biggest prospects. God can do it for you. You're amazing. God is Hallelujah. Good. God is good. Listen, if you're in this house, you're not blessed. You see, in this house, we don't look for people to give us. We have understood the way you come out is the way you give. Your giving is your coming out. Amen. Not your receiving. Your giving. Amen. So now you imagine. Me, I'm good. You think with what I've done, what do you think I just gained from God? Amen. 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 Okay, you see your jealousy. When God spoke to me, I realized it was my opportunity for even more. No problem. Bang. 
So you, <laughs> I told you money is hunting you down. I'm, I'm on it today. Huh? I'm on it today. <laughs> I'm on it. <laughs> I'm on it today. <laughs> Apostle, come, come. We have to finish. God just said anoint them. Apostle, bring. Come up here. Come on the altar. This is your promotion. Come. God does not give where there are needs. God gives where there is a mission. Please kneel, kneel here. I'll say it again. God does not give because you need. If you need, God will sustain you. But God only increases you if there is what? If you're not on a mission, don't expect breakthrough. That will shift your life to another dimension. It doesn't happen like that. Apostle, touch, touch them. Touch them, Apostle. The next one, Apostle, anoint their hands and their feet. From today, you have the anointing to possess land, Amen. to own land. You know, to possess land and to own land is a gift. It is a grace. It is an anointing. Ah, remove your shoes as quickly as you can. Now when you go to a property you like, you want, you take off your shoes. You step, you say, this one, we want it. Amen. The moment you do that, uh, uh, if you celebrate them, God is also visiting you. And he's going to fix your house. me let the spirit of wealth enter you may you receive it in the name of Jesus see you are next you are next you are next you are next you're next see even those who are watching at home you are next see Grab what you want to give to God. We have a little bit. No, I haven't forget. This is my grandson. This one is good. <laughs> he said, not yet, not yet. <laughs> I got you. One of these days, uh, you need to come hang out with me. Okay? Uh -huh. Don't worry, you're good. Listen. You give dangerously, God blesses you dangerously. Amen. You know, my son and daughter, my son has been playing for us for a long time. Faithful. They left places with people with bigger names when we had nothing to come and serve God. But that labor, he was just putting bricks for his house. Amen. Every position God puts you, he's trying you, looking at you. If you're truly ready for the place he's taking you. Mama, do you know anyone called O'Neill? Yes, O'Neill. Who there knows O'Neill or O'Neill? Is that a last name? Huh? Is it first or last name? I don't know. It can be both. Okay. Who is O'Neill? I don't know O'Neill. How do you know him, Mama? What is your name? Sorry? Gwen Holmes. My husband was his adopted son. Okay. 
Uh, what's your name, Mama? Yes. Timberlake. Huh? Delita Timberlake. Come to me. Come, come to me, Mama, too. Is this your first time here, Mama? No. You've been here a few times? Yes. Come, come to me. This person that is O'Neill has to do with the medical field. Are you listening to me, Mama? Yes. And it's actually a man. Okay. It's a man. I'm not sure if it is his first name or his last name. But you're going to meet this man. Okay? Okay. And it will be a blessing to you. I don't know exactly how. But when you see the person, you will know that God has sent them for a specific thing for you. Okay. Prophesy. Are you listening to me? Yes. Mm. In the mighty name of Jesus. Apostle, please minister unto her. Bishop O'Neill. William Morris O'Neill. We okay. called him Pope. Okay. He adopted my husband after his father died. He okay. adopted all 13 children. Wow. His mother. Wow. He healed me from what you call Bachette's disease. Wow. He put his hand in my mouth with olive oil. Mm. God had heard it, mm. but after that, I, I was healed. Wow. Wow, God is good. God is good. Father, touch this dear mother. Touch this dear mother. Touch this woman of God. As a servant in your kingdom, increase her now. May the grace that was on even her father, because if he was a father to her husband, is also a father to her. Transfer what was in him, even in her. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is done in Jesus' name. Amen. Grab what you want to give to God. Are you ready to give to God? Yes. Are you ready to give to God? Yes. Where, where's the uh, where's, uh, bishop bass player? Bishop Christopher. Uh, take your bass, sir. Celebrate God with slapping that thing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> bang, bang. I need Major Isaac on this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Stand Glory up. Glory be to God. Always yes, Dad. Come. I, I, we won't stop you. you. You want to give? $2,000 to the couple. You are getting 2000 more. Amen. Amen. So, where is your wife? Wife, where art thou? <laughs> Please don't join our church now. <laughs> <laughs> you just received two more thousand. Amen, 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 amen. amen.
<laughs> I told you money will attack you. And it's not even done yet, actually. Amen. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's deep. It's extra deep. Please, we have closed our membership. No more cards, no more. Uh, we will open enrollment. It's invite only, you know. Invite only. Listen, I genuinely, this is, and the Lord Jesus is my witness. I genuinely desire that you prosper. Amen. 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 Like genuinely. You know, a lot of men of God say it because it's a preaching. It's what God's word says. But they don't even carry that passion. Me, I'm so passionate that I will use my own resources to push you to where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, it's not everywhere you give anointing. There are times people need a coat. There are times people need a coat. You have to take out a coat and cover them. Not uh, speeches. Father, open. Mm -mm. They have been in Father's presence. Sometimes you need, you see, prophetic acts defy. One time Jesus is healing somebody by then see. The next time, ah. Go and wash. Because what needs to be, whatever the solution is, requires a different protocol. It's all different. So, I am proud of the church that we are. We are a church of givers. And it will be a sin if I tell you to do things I don't do. It's hypocrisy in the sight of God. So if I am not doing it and I tell you to do it, God should punish me. But if I am doing it, God is making you also do it. So when God is lifting me, he's lifting you. There are some of you, you are struggling financially because you've never taken care of somebody's financial problem. Mm -hmm. Is everything okay there? Or they're just ready to give? Okay, give us an extra dancing song. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Yeah. Don't be so holy you say Jesus is my Valentine. I have married Jesus. No, you haven't. <laughs> I'm married to the Lord. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Don't you just love him? Don't you just love him? Don't you just love him? I said, don't you just love him? Are we ready? Let's give to God.
Come on and give him a shout. Oh, come on, you didn't hear me give the King of Glory a shout. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. May you experience favor this week. May you experience blessings this week. May your household be blessed. May your families be blessed. May everything that you find your hand to be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. at what just happened today. This service was absolutely phenomenal. Listen, we are not chosen. We're moving from chosen to anointed. It's about, excuse me, not even anointed, appointed. Today was absolutely crazy. We've watched the hand of God move so powerfully. Listen, when you get to Revelation Church, you get life, you get hope, you get restoration, you get revelation. Please make sure to stay tuned and make sure you visit. People are flying in from all over the world. That's one of them right there. Flying in from all over the world to experience the hand of God here. All Listen, over the world. all over the world. All over the world. Listen, what, what, what can they do? What can they do? Clap better for Jesus, right? They can clap better for Jesus. They can follow us on YouTube. Yep. They can follow us on any social media any, platform. Any, any if you're not here, then I don't know where you need to be. You need to be here. You need to be here. here. Matter of fact, this is Pastor, the Pastor Todd, youth pastor. Amen. Next, this week. This Friday. This Friday. This Friday, come to the hot. Well, let me let me put a disclaimer okay. out okay, there because right, all right, of y'all right. will show up. The whole church is going to show up. This is only for junior high, high schools, and young adults. Come to the hot seat with Papa Low, Prophet Lovey. You can ask him anything you want to ask. Spiritual, physical, whatever the case may be, it's gonna be awesome. This Friday, six thirty to eight thirty. It's about, can I come? No. Uh, you see the judgment? Years ago. You see the judgment in his eyes? Wow! Listen, this is it's about to be crazy. This Friday, six thirty. Young people, youth, make sure you're there. Amen. Listen, we love y'all. We love y'all. We look like my We do, we do, we do. Let's stand back to back. Stand back to back. This is going to be our album cover. <laughs>